Hello friends, greetings from Thegama in the Basque Country. We are in our 10th day of, of lockdown here because of the coronavirus and I just checked the website and there are officially four people infected in our little town of Thegama, but there have been 133 as of today, 133 deaths in the Basque Country, the provinces of the Basque region. And then in Spain, totally already, there have been 2,700 people who have, who have died. And there's over 17,000 worldwide. So con the numbers continue to grow. The tragedy continues to build. And, and it's supposed to for, for definitely several weeks and probably months. And so today I want to focus my attention on... Another man in the Old Testament, his name is Joash. He's not very well known, so I'm going to spend some of the time giving some background to his life. But I'd like to read, first of all, from the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 22, and verse 10. It reads this way, uh, But when Athaliah, the mother of Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the seed royal of the house of Judah. But Jehoshabeth, or Jeho Jehoshabah, the daughter of the king, took Joash, the son of Ahaziah, and stole him from among the king's sons that were slain, or being slain, and put him and his nurse in a bedchamber. So Jehoshabeth, the daughter of King Jehoram, the wife of Jehoiada, the priest, a lot of names here, for she was the sister of Ahaziah, hid him from Athaliah, so that she slew him not. And he was, this is verse 12, and he was with them, hid in the house of God, six years in the temple. And Athaliah reigned over the land. So a little bit of background then. Joash is the seventh king of Judah. Many of you will, will know that Solomon, after Solomon, the, the kingdom was divided, went to Re, uh, the, the south part, went to Rehoboam, his son, and then there were several, the kings kept on coming in succession until number seven, which would have been, which would be this, uh, this young boy, this boy at this point, uh, called Joash. Okay, so he's the seventh in line. When Joash's father, Ahaziah, was murdered, okay, his mother, Athaliah, went after her grandchildren, and she slaughtered her grandchildren. I can hardly fathom that. She slaughtered all of her grandchildren, wiped them out, and started to reign herself. Well, she thought she had. One of jo Joash's aunts, possibly a half aunt, when they were killing the children, she snatched uh, Joash just in the nick of time and, and was able to hide him in a room that was either a bedroom or kind of a storage room there close to the temple, on the temple, in the temple area. So, Joash was secretly protected for six years. <laughs> That's crazy. Six years. Hardly anybody knows he's alive. This little baby learns to walk and to feed himself in a little room in the temple. And nobody, nobody really knows that he's even alive. And when he's seven years old, the high priest, whose name is Jehoiada, arranges a spectacular coronation event. It's a, it's a double event. They, they crown Joash. He's seven years old. They crown Joash, and at the same time, they execute his grandmother, who's been reigning for six years, Athaliah. And Jehoiada, the high priest, who knows about Joash, obviously, he is the one that orchestrates the whole thing, puts it all together. Now, Joash has three very important people in his life, at least three. There are probably more, but I don't know. 
no, I could see why they would not want to let me, many people know about what's going on. But he, he, we know of three. Jehoshaba, or Jehoshabeth, his aunt. Uh, his nurse. And Jehoiada, the high priest. These three people, have they owe, he owes them his life. So Joash begins to reign. He's seven years old. He reigns for 40 years. That's one of the longer reigns in the history of Judah. And mu much of that time, and we don't know how much, but much of the time he is under the tutelage of Jehoiada, the supervision of Jehoiada, the high priest, who, by the way, is a, is a terrible enemy of Baal worshipers. He just goes... He goes everywhere and just wipes out the idolatry from the land. So Jehoiada is a tremendous man of God. And he's the one sort of supervising over Joash. And Joash, about the only thing we know of that he did well or good was he, he carried out some tremendous reforms on, ref, uh, yeah, reforms on, the, on the temple. And so he's known, he's known for that. But then sometime into it, I'm guessing well over halfway through, those 40 years, be my guess, Jehoiada dies, the, the, the high priest. He dies at 130 years of age. And what does uh, Joash do? The people come to him, they say, hey, we want to go back to the idols. We, we, we like that worship of Baal and all of that, and we're, we're, we, we're not in agreement with Jehoiada and the temple. No, let's, could you? And so Joash caves into them, and allows idolatry to come sweeping back into the country. And so Jehoiada has a son who is probably contemporary with, with Joash, not sure, maybe older. But his name is Zechariah. And Zechariah calls him down and rebukes him for what he's done. And Joash orders... the men to stone Zechariah, the son of the man who saved his life and gave him the throne, basically. The Lord Jesus makes note of this. And so, we're like, what in the world is going on with this guy, Joash? What a sad story for a, for a boy who had so many privileges. And that's where I want to focus as we, as we wrap up this this devotional. Notice the privileges he had. He was loved and protected by at least three people, probably more, but at least three people who, who risked their lives for him. <laughs> Anyone, all, all three of those for sure, they were risking their lives if Athaliah heard about, had heard about Joash. So he had three very, very important people in his life who loved him and gave, gave much for him to to be able to, to go forward, forward. He grew up and was spared death inside the temple. Like, I mean, it's like those who may have grown up almost like living right beside the church, you know, or in the parsonage maybe, uh, children of preachers or whatever. I mean, he grew up right there. He was always, literally, in church for the first six years, you know. And the high priest was a personal friend. Who had set up his, who even set up his coronation, but in spite of all of these privileges, he despised them and threw away his life and all of God's blessing with it. Well, what are some lessons? So we wrap this up. What are some lessons that we can learn from this another quarantine story kind of thing, where Joe Ash was set aside for six years? But in this case, we, learn, we have to learn it from his negative example. He's definitely not a Noah or a Moses or an Elijah. Elijah. So, first of all, in your quarantine or in our quarantine or, or maybe just in that specific and difficult situation that you're going through where you feel isolated and by yourself, you're facing something by yourself, you're, maybe you're lonely, and it's a difficult thing, look around and thank those 
who are a blessing to you because there definitely are people, and you could name them, who are being or, an, or have been a blessing to you during your dark times. Look around and thank them. It's so important to be grateful. The lack of gratitude... And that, that's one thing I see here with Joash. The lack of gratitude can be fertile ground for apostasy, for leaving, when we don't appreciate the privileges God gave us. Here's a few, uh, a few questions. Oh, first of all, not only look around to see who has blessed you, look around to see who you can bless during your time of quarantine or separation. Surely there's someone you can be a blessing to. And then, here's a few questions that we can ask. Do you enjoy these, any of these huge privileges of God's life, uh, of, uh, of God on your life? Here's a couple. Surely some of them are, are yours. I know some of them are definitely privileges that I've had. Have you been born in a country where the gospel can be heard freely? It's either a yes or a no, probably. Were you born into a Christian home? Do you have family members close by right now, even in the time of difficulty, in the time of isolation? Do you have family members with you who love you? Many of you do. Do you have all the food and clothes you could possibly need for today? Could you wear everything you have? Could I eat everything I have today? in the quarantine? Do you have friends who have been generous with you? It sort of touches on what we mentioned earlier. All of us can think of one, two, three, four, we can go down the list of friends who have been a blessing to us. These are privileges that God has allowed us to enjoy. So, the takeaway is this. In our quarantine, as we come out of it, whatever your situation is, be thankful to God for those privileges and don't despise his blessings like Joash did. Let me finish reading 2 Chronicles chapter 24, verse 25. Uh, let me see, 25, yes. Okay, it says, His own servants... Joash. His own servants conspired against him for the blood of the sons of Jehoiada the priest and slew him on his bed and he died. And they buried him in the city of David but they buried him not in the sepulchres of the kings without honor. Why? He didn't deserve it. So privileged, so ungrateful, May God help us to recognize our privileges and blessings, even in a time of quarantine or similar, and be grateful to Him and to those who have been a blessing to us. I trust that will be your approach and mine as well as we go through this day. God bless you. Goodbye.